What's going on everyone? Austin John plays here and today I'm going to be going over all of the Generation 9 shiny Pokemon available in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. I'm making this video for two reasons. One, if you're shiny hunting Pokemon out in the wild and you don't know what one looks like, you can just fast forward to the regional dex time that's appropriate for the Gen 9 Pokemon that I'm covering here. And two, I've actually been speaking with many people who are colorblind who have a very difficult time seeing some of the shiny Pokemon in this game. And because of that, I thought it would be a really good idea for me to cover all of the Pokemon and I'm going to be showing you their regular and their shiny version. But also some of these Pokemon are very difficult to see with regular vision, so you may find some added benefit to this as well. Now if you have regular vision, by all means, go on to Cerebi and just look at the two pictures and don't scroll through this video, but I wanted to make this video, that way it was on YouTube. And using the YouTube app on your Nintendo Switch, you can then look at the exact Pokemon that you want to hunt. And since that Switch is going to be the same color output through the same HDMI that your gameplay is going to be, you can then decide if you need to make adjustments to your television. There's going to be a picture of two Pokemon on the screen, and if you can't tell a difference, you may want to adjust how your TV looks. If this is a shared TV, just keep in mind that, you know, once you're done, you may want to change it back before someone else watches it or whatever. At time of recording, you cannot currently get the starter shiny in the wild or max raid dens, but that may change in the future, so for that reason I am going to be showing them off here. Your cat starter typically has much more purpley eyes and that extends to the bud that's going to be appearing on its neck, and once you get to its final form, the flower has budded. Boy Coco is a pink color as opposed to a red, which extends through its second form, although its final form is a little bit more purplier than pink. Quaxley is the most difficult to see because its hair, instead of being blue, is more of a spearmint that continues on to its second form, although it's more noticeable because the hair is larger. But by the time it reaches its final form, its entire body is a brighter color. Lechonk is very noticeable because it's pink. Boink alone is one of the few Generation 9 Pokemon that has a gender difference, this being the male, regular and shiny, this being the female, regular and shiny. Spidops is very noticeable, as well as his evolution. Bugs typically seem to have a much wider color change, which is normal because they're much more simpler biology. Palmo Shiny is a bright red color as opposed to its much more calming orange color that extends through its evolutions, although its second form is a little bit more pale. And come its final form, it's very noticeable. Here we have Paldean Wooper. It's regular on the left, shiny on the right. You may be thrown off a little bit by this because regular Wooper is going to be very close to that color on the right, and this continues on for its evolution as well. However, its evolution definitely goes a little bit more purpley colored. Here is Mousehold, one of the most difficult ones for you to possibly see, especially me showing you the Pokedex page that has these artificial scan lines on it. His shirt and her pants go from this very pale blue color to a very pale beige color. I'm in the middle of this hunt right now and I increased the reds, decreased the greens, and decreased the blues. That way it's going to be very noticeable between the blue shirt and the beige shirt. That continues on for its evolution as well, although I think the youngest one is naked. And family of four, yeah, both little ones are naked. Fido, instead of it being buttercream frosting colored, it's instead just unfrosted colored, and that continues on for its evolution as well, although its evolution may be a little bit more difficult to see. Small of is only a very small difference is that the olive itself on the top of its head is going to be a darker color. Its tone is slightly more yellow. That continues on for its second form as well. When it comes to Arboliva, it's a little bit more difficult because the olives go from purple to black, although its green areas go from a bright green to sort of a dull forest green. The Pomodor on Squawk Ability's head is typically the easiest way to see its color difference because it remains true through all of the different color variations, here being the blue one, the yellow one, although on the white one, its beak also changes to that same paler color. Dackley's entire evolution line is a little bit easier to see because the part of its body that is the sodium chloride is actually affected by a different isotope and brings out the impurities, therefore it's going to be orange colored instead of white. That remains true for its evolution. 
and is very noticeable on its final form. Menke, instead of it being a cream colored, is going to be a bright green color. That cream difference becomes a little less noticeable, although its appendages become a very dark green, very easy to see from far away. Annihilate becomes much more difficult to see because its appendages, instead of being sort of a smoke color, is sort of a blue smoke color, and its body, instead of being gray, is sort of a purple. Here is Char Cadet. The only visible difference is going to be its eyes. If you're doing an isolated encounter, I would recommend doing it just at the Pokemon Center south of where the Bombardor Titan was. If you cook an Encounter 3 fire recipe there, it will only be Char Cadet. And if you really highlight blue colors in the spectrum, then its eyes are going to be very easy to see. If I increase the blue right here and if I decrease the red, then all of its body doesn't pop and those blue eyes are going to be very noticeable from far away. Once you get to Char Cadet's two evolutions that are version exclusive, the only difference is that the eyes are going to be different colored. On Armor Rouge, it's going to be blue eyes. And on Cerule Edge, it's going to be red eyes. So typically, they just kind of have each other's eyes and that's the only difference. For Tadbulb, the lower part of its body, instead of being brown, is going to be red. It may be a little bit difficult to spot from far away. Belly Bolt is very noticeable. Watchroll is sort of a subtle change. The top of its head, instead of being just completely desaturated, instead has a slightly purple color to it. That extends for its evolution Kilowatchroll as well. For Dunsparce, all of the blue parts of its body become pink. That remains true for Dunsparce as well. That remains true for D Dunsparce's three-segment form as well. For Girafferig, the spines on its back as well as its nose go from pink to blue. For Rigorath, goes from an orange color to a bright red color, the same color that's used on Palmy, as well as it continuing that its nose is going to be blue as well as its eyelashes. And the spines on its back go from a yellow color to an all-white color which is going to match the white on the lower part of its body. Literally, all of it is different except for the black part of the stem that was previously its tail. Mastiff becomes a bright purple color, and all of the yellow parts of the top part of its fur just become a dark color that matches its mouth area. Whenever it spawns in a pack, it's very easy to see. I would recommend doing a dark encounter three right outside of the normal town and head north up the road. Mabostiff? Uh, which I believe is how it's pronounced. Uh, yeah, its entire body goes from gray to purple. For Shrudel, its eyes go from a green color to a purple color, probably the only way you would notice a difference. When it evolves, its ears change color completely, as well as the outlines of its eyes go from purple to red, and its hands go from Splatoon color to Wario color. I made a very long and in-depth post on Twitter about how to spot the difference in Paldean Tauros. Paldean Tauros is one of the few Pokemon that is actually going to not only have a color change, but a texture change as well. The regular is on the left with a darker mane and a lighter body. On the right, its mane is lighter and its body is darker. In addition to that, its fur is going to be more matte on the shiny model. So if you have any light reflections that are bouncing off of the side of the body, that's going to be the regular. But if it's only bouncing off of the top of the body, then that's most likely the shiny. That remains true for its fire form as well and its water form as well. For Bramblin, the top of its body goes from a regular wood color to a very desaturated dead wood color, as well as the bottom most parts of its body become a dark green color instead of a brown color. Once it evolves, that remains true, although its appendages are longer and easier to see, and its eyes are going to be lighter in color as well. Toad's Cool removes all saturation from its body, so you're not colorblind, it just doesn't have any color. Toad's Cruel completely changes its color palette altogether and all of the yellow parts of its body go to red. Clough goes from orange to blue and all of the black goes to white. It is impossible to miss. Capsicid has a very small model and it's very difficult to see because it goes from just all green to yellow to blue, but it has more to do with how small it is. In addition, it's only found in the desert and the grass, so you're going to have to match one color or the other. Scovillain is easier to see because he's taller. However, its heads are so large, it may actually block your view of its body if you're looking at it from above. Reller is another one of the Pokemon that has a complete texture change. In addition to the Pokemon itself being different instead of it pushing around dung it's actually pushing around a nugget and because it's a metal it has the same light reflections that metal does in the game when it evolves all of its body becomes gold like an ancient egyptian stag beetle 
Flittle is so small of a model that it's going to be very difficult to see that really the only difference is that its skirt, instead of it being pink, is going to be seafoam green colored. Once it evolves to Espathra, it's much easier to see because the large part of its wings, instead of orange, dark purple black, just black, dark gray, they're much different. For Tinka Tot, the crest on its chest as well as its weapon go from steel to bronze colored. Once it evolves, you'll see that the two petals from its skirt and its weapon go from steel to bronze. And for Tinka Tough, that remains the same that the petals on its skirt and its extremely large weapon go from steel to bronze. Wiglet gets color. Wugtrio completely changes color. Bumburder is actually a difficult one to see in that the only difference is that its feet and its bill lose saturation and its eyes get a little red outline. I went to the south side of the water town with a dark encounter and at night they're all going to land and roost. So it's easier if you take out your camera app and you hunt it that way. That's how I got mine. Palafin was actually the first Gen 9 shiny that I got. It's very noticeable that it's going to be purple instead of blue and all of the water is blue, so it's gonna stand out a lot. Did I say Palafin? I meant Finizen. This is Palafin. Oh, do I have its hero form shiny as well? I sure do. Varum goes from being a silver engine to a gold engine, like on old 50s hot rods and that remains for its evolution as well. Cyclozar is a completely different color altogether. The top of its head becomes much lighter and its body just loses saturation. Orthoworm is one of the most noticeable differences, whether it's going to be just poking its head out or if it's going to be laying flat, all of its body goes from red to blue. Glimit's body color changes ever so slightly. However, when it spawns in a pack form, like in Area Zero, it's very easy to tell the difference between the pack. And for Glamora, its outermost ring of petals is going to be a much darker color. This will also be present if it's just going to be hanging on a wall. Our poor little guy. Yeah, he becomes yellow. Very easy to see. And when it evolves, it's not as yellow, although it is very easy to see that the purple on top of its head becomes much more noticeable as a dark brown, and it's, I guess you would call it fur, goes from white to being a cream. Flamigo becomes a very desaturated pink that at first you don't think you're gonna notice, but if you've ever seen Flamigo and then you see it shiny, you're going to immediately notice. This was my second Gen 9 shiny. It is humanly impossible to miss the difference between Satatl, regular, and shiny, as well as its evolution to Titan. Porn Award goes from a red color to a blue color. That remains true for Bisharp, although its metal starts to go from a silver to more of a goldish. And for King Gambit, its feet still remain silver, its arms still remain gold, but all of the blue, but all of the armor red becomes blue, excluding the mustache and, I don't know, its nipples. Veluza, although it may be coming at you at like 100 miles an hour, you're going to notice that it's green instead of purple. Dodonzo is enormous, and instead of blue and light blue, it's going to be white and yellow, as well as its tongue. Okay, let's talk about Tatsugiri. Tatsugiri has three different colors and three different shinies of its three different colors. Some of them are very easy to see. The easiest one to see is going to be what's called its droopy form, which is this pink color, and then it becomes all white. This is called its curly form. The easiest way to tell it apart is that it's not so much about the colors, but the pattern. That on the left, it just has this darker orange that hangs down over its less saturated orange, and its shiny is a brown that hangs over the less saturated orange. The yellow one is called the stretchy form, which is very noticeable because instead of it being yellow, it's orange with yellow stripes. The difficulty comes in because if you're looking at the left, this is the regular curly form, and the one on the right is the shiny, stretchy form. That is the most difficult part to tell between these Pokemon. Now getting on to our Paradox Pokemon of the past, this is Great Tusk. Screamtail is a completely different color. Its eyes become red instead of yellow, and then also the back of its body becomes a purple color instead of a red color. Very easy to see from the front or the back. This is Brute Bonnet. Instead of it being Pokeball colored, it's blue and red. 
Fluttermane becomes bright green with orange tips. Slitherwing loses its red for just more orange. Sandy Shocks is one of the more difficult ones to see because it's only outside in that bright sunlight. So because of that, its metal shines really, really bright, and it may be difficult to see that the magnets are going to be black instead of silver but it loses the color of the polarity on the magnets. In addition, its body instead of silver becomes gold. But again, where you are, there's that bright light. It may be difficult to see. Getting onto our future Paradox Pokemon, here is Iron Treads, which is only going to be a silver and black trunk, which you don't think you're gonna be able to see, but trust me, you're gonna be able to see it because the side of its trunk is going to be silver as well. So if you see one of them just being really, really shiny, that's it. Iron Bundle loses all of its saturation except for its blue. Very easy to see. Iron Hands, everything that was painted blue is now just going to be silver. It is very easy to see. And from the back, it's even easier to see. Iron Jugulus doesn't have any blue paint on its body or black paint on its body, except for the middle area that's carbon fiber and texture. Iron Moth is one of the most difficult ones to see because it's only available outside. Its antennae on its face instead of red is going to be silver, as well as the innermost part of its six wing pieces. From the back, it is noticeable and it also loses that little red bit. The lower half of its body loses its teal tint and just becomes more silver. You cannot miss Iron Thorns. Frigabax becomes just more blue in color. In fact, the color of its tummy on its regular model becomes its entire body, and the little bits that are drooping from its hands instead of yellow are just gonna be kind of purpley white. Once it evolves, its body goes from a light blue to a seafoam green, and the hand bits go from orange to pink. And even its final form is very difficult to tell that its body color just changes slightly, but its hand bits instead of red are pink. Here is Gimme Ghoul's chest form, which is currently shiny locked. The only difference is that the Gimme Ghoul inside of it, instead of silver, is going to be white. For future proofing, here is Gimme Ghoul's roaming form, regular, and Gimme Ghoul's roaming form shiny is just going to be silver. It loses that bluish, purpley, slight hue to it. This is Golden Go, who is currently shiny locked. The only difference that is any possible to see is that its eyes instead of orange are going to be slightly darker and all of the bands on its body, including its hair bands and its head bands, instead of it being orange, are just going to be silver. But they are so small that it becomes very difficult to see. There is no other visible differences of Golden Go at all. Here are the Treasures of Ruin, which are shiny locked. Wo Chin becomes sort of an autumn color. Chin Pao becomes a much darker color. Ting Lu loses a lot of its red inspiredness for blue. And Chi Yu, instead of it being fire colored, it's very hot fire colored, which is a blue flame. Roaring Moon, instead of its body being blue, it's going to be green. Its feathers on its face and arms become yellow, which remains true for its back as well. Also, the purple area of its back becomes red. Iron Valiant loses all of its green, and it's very easy to see that way. This is Koridon, who is currently shiny locked, and this is Moridon, who is currently shiny locked. Well, there we go. I hope seeing all of these Generation 9 Pokemon from a Nintendo Switch, that way you could pull it up on your Nintendo Switch and calibrate your TV or monitor settings to make the differences in the shiny more visible becomes fruitful for you and your shiny hunts, regardless of your vision and or handicap. If you found this video helpful, do me a favor, hit the thumbs up button down below. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe, turn on notifications. Thank you for so much for being here. Until next time, Austin John out. Man, they see me shining. Like I got the charm, stay strapped, got that jet ball in my palm Felt from the sky, guess I'm the chosen one And if you need to know how, check out Austin John Champion flow, flow, yeah I got that champion flow, flow